Defense by Zha Dong Zhang. Um, Zha Dong is, um, uh, he, he has a background uh, in zooplankton ecology. He first got a, a BA degree from uh, Shulman University in 2001. And then he went on at the same university and in 2004, uh, he got a, a master's degree, and his thesis was titled Marine Planktonic Copepod Egg Bank, a New Phenomenon um, for Benthic Pelagic Coupling. And so he got his master's degree in 2004, and then he came here to marine science in the fall of 2006. So what did he do in between? It's amazing what he did in between. Uh, he, he certainly was not sitting at home gardening. Um, <laughs> he, he received two research grants uh, in this time period. Uh, one of them was from the equivalent of the Chinese um, National Science Foundation. And uh, that one was to uh, study more aspects of, of copepod egg banks and evolution, evolutionary processes in egg banks with a particular emphasis on polar marine zooplankton. And that was when you went to Antarctica? Yes. And he did the work there for three months, the uh, lucky guy. So he went there for three months. And then he got another grant, um, it was called from the Polar Science Foundation for Young Scientists. And uh, this was, the title was Stress and Survival Responses of Marine Zooplankton to Arctic Warming. So that's where he went. He went to the Arctic then and spent a month up there. And from this work uh, in his, thesis, as well as these two projects, he came to Stony Brook with six publications, um, of which uh, he was first author on four of them, and uh, one of them was in, in Marine Ecology Progress Series, and journal, and the other one was the Journal of Experimental Marine Biology and Ecology, so I didn't really have to do much advising by the time he <laughs> did that. Um, so uh, it's a real pleasure to have him speak to you today. Uh, I felt like wearing black because I'll probably be in mourning when he, when he leaves. Um, but, uh, but I'm very happy for him. And Chris would also like to say something. Yeah, I'll just say a few quick, quick words as well. Because when uh, Zhao Dong got his start on his research, Darcy, speaking of Antarctica, I happened to be in Antarctica. I have this student with a really good background, doesn't really have a project. I know you're working on some dinoflagellates. Maybe you could talk to him. We can get him going on something. And uh, so I'd never met John Dong before. He came out to Southampton and met with uh, Dr. Tong and I. We were sitting down with him and talking about some ideas, talking about the toxicity of cofidinium. And, uh, you know, I, and uh, John Dong had to say, I think I have some good ideas. And I uh, said, OK. So we got him a culture. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and he just took off from there. Um, you know, Zhao Dong is fairly soft-spoken, and, uh, you know, but it, so you, you don't know, you know, exactly what he's thinking or what he's up to, um, <laughs> but I think you'll see from his presentation today that, you know, he is very, very well-read in the literature. He knows the eco uh, ecology and evolution literature very well, knows marine science literature well, and, um, and he was at the, uh, the all, last thing I'll mention, he at the U.S. HAB meeting uh, out in Washington this fall. And, uh, and he gave a talk, and he, he, he went up, and you know, he started out very quiet and sort of uh, weren't sure what to expect. He, he may have been the first non-English speaking uh, or native English speaking speaker at the conference, so everybody sort of, and he started out a little quiet, and then just within the first minute, he became incredibly animated and gave what was far and away the best talk of the day easily. And, uh, and I think, and, and you know, many people coming up to me afterwards and saying, wow, where did this guy come from? He's amazing. <laughs> and during the conference, he, he, he earned the nickname amongst the people attending the conference as Rockstar. <laughs> I didn't know that. So, uh, so uh, you know, it, it, be, be ready to be wowed by the Rockstar. <laughs> okay. And it's going to be a great presentation. Okay. Thanks, Darcy, and thanks, Chris, for the introduction. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's begin the presentation. Uh, my picture work is uh, ecological and evolutionary interactions between the copepod acacia tungsten and the dendrobaterite cocodinium polychaetidus. 
In the past six years, cochineal bloom have been observed in the eastern base of Long Island. This is my two-year observation at the South Southampton Marine Station. So you can see cochineal blooms occur in late summer and last about for one month. The seal bloom, uh, bloom densities are several thousand seals per milliliter. This picture shows the seawater during the bloom time, and the background is the same site during the non-bloom time. So it seems cochineal bloom are not good for marine ecosystem. Unfortunately, it's not a local problem. Those are bloom reported in peer-reviewed journals. So you can see cochineal blooms occur in many coastal waters, reading, out, uh, uh, reading throughout the temperate, subtropical, and tropical latitudes. In Korea and uh, Japan, cochineal bloom cause severe fish kills every year and uh, result in the loss of millions of dollars. My study focused on the interactions between the cochineal and the, uh, their grazers. First, I wanted to know, is, is cochineal harmful to their grazers? My study showed that cochineal is very harmful to copepros at high seal densities. Okay. So then the following question is, uh, is cochineal always harmful to copepros? Contrary to expectation, Cochinia is uh, beneficial to copepros at low seal densities. Okay. Now we know cochineal is a good food for copepros at low seal densities, which means copepros can heavily feed on cochineal seals. Okay. So the, the following question is, how does cochineal survive at low seal densities? My study shows that cochineal can form the long chains to reduce the grazing mortality. Okay. By now, most of my studies are performed in the lab using the cochineal culture. So what's happening in the field? Is cochineal bloom harmful to copepros in the field? So I studied the copepros population dynamics in, uh, during the cochineal bloom. Okay. Uh, now we know cochineal can produce harmful compounds. Uh, this is the chemical de defense. And the uh, cochineal can form the long chains this is a morphological defense. Okay. So the final story is, uh, can copepros fight back? Okay. I used the copepros Akasha Thompson as a grazer in my studies. Akasha Thompson is a dominant species in estuary environment <coughs> uh, where cochineal blooms occur. And uh, they can feed on the cochineal seals. I also used the federated lodomonos lens as a control. Lodomonos is an ideal food for 